David here with Figboot on pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you a pen which was launched a couple of weeks ago to quite the splash. Uh, there were lots of folks posting pictures of this pen on social media. What is this pen? Uh, it is the latest release from Caveco in their sport line, and that would be the Iridescent Pearl. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Iridescent Pearl Sport, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Caveco for providing this pen for review. The pen arrives in this no frills cardboard box. It does have a little bit of a pearlescent swirling on it. I don't know if the light can catch that. Um, some of the Caveco models come in these cool little tins, but this one doesn't. And that's okay, because most of the time uh, you're just getting rid of the box anyway. Uh, or if you're like me, you uh, go ahead and uh, you keep the box. And then after several months, you realize that you have a pile of boxes that you really have no use for and you end up disposing of them. And then inside the box, we have the pen. Uh, this is the Caveco Sport Iridescent Pearl. Um, this pen is what they call a limited production. Now, a limited edition is something where there's a predetermined number of pens that they will produce. Uh, for a limited production, uh, think of it like the uh, tactile turn seasonal releases that I've reviewed. The sales period is open for a period of time, and the company will produce the pens to meet the demand within that given time period. Um, I'm really liking this material they chose for this pen. It has a lot of subtleties to it. Um, it really does have a pearlescent look. Uh, at first glance, it appears to be somewhat translucent white, but when the light hits the material, it really does resemble a pearl with the white and pink undertones. Uh, it's a unique look that I really care for. Uh, it's one of those materials where the longer you look at it, the more intricacies you can make out. It's pretty cool. Uh, the Quebeco Sport is the epitome of a pocket pen. Uh, it even fits nicely in like a smaller coin pocket in your pair of jeans. Um, if you have a breast pocket, it'll fit deeply enough in there where it won't be apt to just fall out. You know, I will admit that it took me a while to come around to caring for the Caveco Sport model. Uh, early in my pen journey, even though the pen would show up on lots of top 10 lists for entry-level pens, I resisted purchasing one for the longest time because I really wasn't quite sure how I felt about the design. Uh, it is a bit blocky and quirky, but after using my Sport that I had purchased, I, I have a greater appreciation for what it is and what it brings to the table, and it has earned a, a greater appreciation from me. Uh, let's take a look at the top of the cap. That's where you can find the Caveco logo. Uh, the KA represents one of the two gentlemen who purchased the company back in 1899. WE represents the other, and CO is for company. That's how they came up with the Caveco name. Uh, this is a clipless pen. You can purchase a clip. This is what it looks like. And it slips on just like that, rather firmly. Um, now, it works great. It gets the job done. Uh, while I am glad to have it for demonstration purposes, this is something that I uh, probably wouldn't purchase nowadays. Um, I purchased this clip very early in my fountain pen journey when I uh, purchased my very first sport. And back then, I really hadn't come around to clipless pens. I thought that everything should have a clip. Uh, I have since come to my senses and realized that there are certain pens out there that are better without a clip. And I would include the sport in that list. Now, I know that there are some clip-only people out there. I've seen comments online where someone will say something like, oh, I'd never purchased that Nakaya dorsal fin because it doesn't have a clip. Uh, now, while everyone is entitled to their own tastes and preferences, if you are someone who feels a dorsal fin needs a clip, then maybe someone in your family should come and do a wellness check on you. So I'm just saying. Uh, the octagonal barrel, let's take that clip off, has eight facets. Uh, these serve to give the pen a distinct visual look, but also serve as a useful roll stop. So you could set this pen down anywhere and it won't roll around. On one of the facets, it says Caveco Collection. Um, the end of the cap angles down slightly, and then there is a medium-sized step down to the end of the barrel. The barrel extends for about an inch until a minute step down to the remainder of the barrel. And at the end of the barrel, it has a grooved edge. And then on the very back, it says made in Germany. The cap twists off with one and a quarter rotations. And underneath, we have a rather diminutive nib. While it is small, I have always found the Caveco medium nibs to be very smooth. Uh, surprisingly so. 
Uh, this nib is available in extra fine, fine, medium, or broad. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section is slightly concave and then transitions into the cap threads and a very small step up to the remainder of the barrel. As you would expect, the section on this pen is a bit on the small side, but I don't find that to be much of an issue. Um, if your grip should spill over the threads, uh, they are plastic and I don't find them to be uncomfortable. If I'm just jotting a quick note, this pen is long enough for me to use unposted. For me, it works fine that way, but most of the time you're going to want to post the cap. You can see it posts very deeply. It is secure, and it does a good job of adding just a little bit more substance to the pen in your hand. Um, it is balanced, uh, and the weight is uh, distributed fairly evenly throughout the pen. Uh, coming in at only 10 grams, this is a very light pen, but it doesn't feel uh, cheap in any way. This is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges, one of which is included with the pen. Um, it will not fit a standard international converter, but Caveco does have these small plunger type converters, which work really well, much better than the old aerometric converters they used to have. You can see what those look like right here. With this pen being made from plastic, it's a great pen to eyedropper. For the longest time, I would eyedropper my first Skyline Sport that I owned. Uh, this material here is a bit translucent, so if you eyedroppered it, you would get a good look at your ink situation. The Caveco Sport Iridescent Pearl is available from a large number of retailers and sells for $27. Uh, I feel that that is a very good value for what you receive with this offering. Uh, in my opinion, the Sport is one of the best pens that you can buy for under $30. It has a very distinct look and design, it is versatile, and with this pearlescent material, it looks really nice as well. Um, I've seen that a number of retailers are currently sold out of this model. It has been very popular, so you might need to be a, do, basically do a bit of searching before you could uh, find a retailer that still has some in stock. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Caveco Sport Iridescent Pearl. Let's see how with the light, how you can really kind of see some of the pink undertones and it really does shine like a pearl. I think it's a really neat material. In regard to some size comparisons, this is what it looks like with the Caveco. Uh, this is the AL Sport. Uh, and then this is what it looks like with a Caveco Lilliput, which is their smallest pen that they offer. And then here it is with another pen I recently reviewed, which is the Gravitas Pocket Pen, which kind of shares a little bit of similarity with the Sport. In regard to a couple of other pens, here it is with an Aurora Optima, which isn't the overall largest pen. Uh, and then here it is with a Sailor Pro Gear Slim. And then finally here it is with a Shone Design Pocket 6. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, let's go ahead and use this posted since that's the way that people are going to be using it the majority of the time. Uh, here it is with the Gravitas Pocket Pen. Uh, and then here it is with the Shone Design Pocket 6. Uh, and then here it is with the Lilliput. So here we go with the writing sample for the Caveco uh, Sport Iridescent Pearl. This is a medium stainless steel nib, and the ink that I'm using here today is Sailor. Uh, it's from their Ink Studio. And the ink is number one, two, three. I thought that this ink was a perfect match for this pen. You can see here that it has some real pearlescent undertones and a nice uh, kind of uh, purplish and pinkish sheen to it. It's really nice. It's a really nice ink, and I think that it matches this pen well. Uh, this is what it looks like with Troublemaker Petrichor. Uh, and then here it is with the Venta Armada, which is, again, very similar in regard to being kind of a grayish, uh, kind of a whitish gray with the pinkish undertones and sheen. 
This is what the 123 bottle looks like. Uh, they always come in the smaller bottles. At least I haven't seen them in the larger ones, but this is a, a nice ink to check out. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. I mentioned this in the review, but um, I do really care for Caveco's medium nibs. Uh, they are fairly smooth. They're kind of just one of those things where they're smoother than you would expect them to be. Uh, they're very nice. In regard to ink flow, it's decent for a medium pen. This isn't the most uh, wet ink. In regard to reverse writing, It's a little bit of hit and miss with that. And in regard to some fast writing, the feed had no problem in keeping up. So there we have the Caveco Sport Iridescent Pearl. I think this is a really neat addition to their lineup. Uh, I think it brings something new to the table other than just a different color. It's kind of a different material, which is nice. And I think that uh, uh, it's a nice addition and something that's well worth checking out, especially for the price. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.